the scheduled meeting of the Town of Berlin Development Review Board. We have one application tonight. Uh, it's an application by Vermont State Employees Credit Union. It's for major site plan review associated with renovations to the interior and some exterior improvements. Uh, we have with us here from the board, Polly Murphy, Carla Weasel. I'm Chair Bob Warnick. Uh, we have John Federich, and we're supposed to have Tour joining Nelson. right. He's joining right now. And, oh, okay. Good. And Tour Nelson joining us now. Um, who will be speaking on behalf of the applicant? Do you want to swear people in? I, I will have to swear to who's. Who, okay. Who, who, who. <laughs> Uh, so it, 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 I imagine all of us are good, may talk at one time or another, but um, I'm Brian Lane Carnes with Provo Engineering, and I'll be, we're the civil design engineer, and I'll be doing the most of the presenting. Paul, you introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, Paul Simon, landscape architect representing uh, VSECU on this project. Steve Aver, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm Steve Avery. I'm the VP of Facilities with the Credit Union. Steve Fred Cradell, would you introduce yourself? Sure. Yeah, I'm Steve Cradell. I'm an architect with uh, DBA Architecture and Planning. Thank you. Bob, I don't think this is a conflict, but I do just want to disclose that I work for the Department of Financial Regulation. And I'm attorney for the banking division, so we do regulate VSCCU. I don't really see a conflict, but I just want, in the interest of full disclosure, does anyone object to Carla participating as a board member? I think there's a conflict of interest. It would appear not. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chair? Mr. Yes? Chair, uh, I just want to uh, formally um, announce in the interest of full disclosure that I am a member of the uh, VSECU. Uh, yeah, I'm also a member. <laughs> and I am too. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> that, would include, that, would include, that would include most of us, I think. Yeah. Uh, so thank you. Um, yeah, I am also. I don't, I feel that's a conflict at all. But, um, okay, very good. Uh, let me swear in those that intend to give testimony. Are there any? Is anybody here don't, not representing either VC, a member of the board? I don't think so. We're all on one team or another. Probably <laughs> so. Yeah. Please raise your right hand. You tend to give testimony, and do you swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, matter before this board tonight, on the penalties of perjury? I do. I do. Thank you. Um, Brian, why don't you kick it off, please? Great. Uh, so uh, here's just, here's the, does everyone see my screen here? Yes. Okay. Um, here's just a general overhead photo of the location. Um, so for anyone who's not familiar, this is the existing uh, VSCC branch building uh, here at the intersection of State Route 62 and Payne Turnpike across from the fire department, elementary school, park and ride. Um, I imagine a lot of folks drove through this intersection to get to the meeting tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the project generally uh, is majority uh, in an internal renovation. Um, the, the almost the entire inside of the building is, is created as part of this project. Um, but the 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 changes to the exterior are, are relatively minor. Um, there's a 92 square foot addition um, in this location. Um, I remember last time not everyone could see my cursor, so I will also draw in red. Or whatever color that as. Yep, that's terrible. Hold on a second. There we go. Uh, in this location, um, so right now um, there's a basically this uh, vestibule tower in the front. Um, there's two canopies in the inside. Um, so this um, easterly. Is supposed to be closed, and then this addition here is um, just a, a, another vestibule addition with, with storefront glass. Uh, in order to accommodate that little addition, um, we're removing two parking spaces just here to the south of it um, and expanding the sort of sidewalk plaza outside in the front of the building. Um, 
And then the other major change, uh, existing drive-through lanes are gonna be widened slightly uh, for um, to both make it a little easier to drive through them uh, than it is currently, and also to accommodate some updated um, equipment. Um, and so as part of that expansion, um, the canopy will need to be replaced because the, the columns and such are gonna be the place for the new, um, the new drive-through lanes. Um, also associated with that is a very small expansion of the existing impervious uh, on the north side of the site, um, just to make sure we have adequate space to have um, folks that get over here and aren't going through the ATM be able to go around without um, having to wait or conflict with um, people who are accessing the drive-through lanes. Um, and then um, we're proposing some updates to the landscaping uh, and then a new um, five foot wide concrete sidewalk uh, road right away along the frontage um, along with new connector sidewalk and, and crossing um, to the existing um, accessible uh, curb ramp um, as well as a couple of bikes rack, bike racks here out in front. So any questions from the board on the, the project generally? Uh, no. Um... Just uh, it, uh, in your general text, uh, you talk on page two of five, uh, the top of the page, you talk about the parking of the parking spaces. What were you saying there? Uh, top of page two. Okay, so yes, and the dimensional requirements. So um, based on the uh, C Street dimensional requirements in the town center district, um, small amount of the existing parking um, that is within 10 feet of the, um, the property line. Um, so these little light dashed lines are, are 10 foot off the property line. So these spaces down here in this corner um, are slightly closer than 10 feet to the property line. At, at worst, it's seven and a half feet um, down this line here. Um, so that's that's an existing condition. It was built with the original development when the, when the requirements weren't different than they are now. Um, we're not changing anything about the pavement over on this side of the site. So we're just requesting that that existing condition, um, you know, be approved as part of an existing non-conforming lot. So it to be recognized and then and approved. Or not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, essentially, we're not changing it, so we're we're not asking for approval. But in in um, in um, recognition of the current uh, dimensional requirements, we just wanted to point out that there is some existing encroachment, but we're not we're not doing anything with it. Uh, you know, questions? We, we can't really pull it in without uh, affecting the. The travel lane for um, skating around the building. Uh, Tom, did you have a comment you wanted to make at all at this time? <clears throat> Not now, Mr. Chair. Does the uh, member of the board have any questions for uh, Brian of a general nature? Nope, uh, I don't. Okay. <laughs> Um, in that case, let's uh, let's proceed with your testimony, uh, specifically with regard to the um, um, uh, project standards, the zoning standards, um, and then the architectural standards. Great. So, um, I mean, I, I think we've uh, addressed the dimensional standards, but you know, the pro as as noted in the table in our um, cover letter, it meets all the dimensional standards of the district um, with the exception of that existing parking that we just talked about. Um, so in, in terms of the architectural standards, the, uh, the existing building uh, meets the district architectural standards pretty well and really in the exterior, there are some pretty minor changes. Um, so I'll just kind of uh, give you an overview of the changes and then I'm, I'll just let Steve um, Pradell from GBA go through the architectural standards. So um, I think that probably the I mean, there is a small addition. Well, here, let me zoom in on the front. So this is the, the west elevation, which is facing the street. Um, so the major kind of things that will look different about the building, um, one, the, the canopy roof is being replaced with a, a flat roof canopy with skylights. Uh, the current canopy roof is uh, pitched similar to the existing building. 
Um, the windows are being replaced in their existing condition, but instead of having the sort of arched top, they'll have straight tops. Um, this uh, entrance is being closed and replaced with a trellis uh, with, with plantings that will climb up the side. And then the addition here, a storefront, um, single story vestibule addition on the front of the building. But otherwise things are remaining the same, the main facade, of, oh, I'm sorry. And the clock uh, is to be removed from the top of the tower. So existing, there's a, another a smaller roof with a clock up on top of the, the entry tower here. Um, but otherwise, you know, the main facade materials of brick um, and stone with some precast concrete banding are remaining the same. The existing um, standing seam metal roof is, is going to stay the same um, to just be sort of patched in um, where the clock is being removed. So, um, yeah, Steve, I don't know if you want to if you want to go through the architectural standards, if you had anything else to say about the uh, building design. Well, I think you. You touched on it, Brian. We're really doing very little changes to what's already there. It's, uh, uh, we're not changing from the existing masonry base and the, and the masonry field. And uh, and really, the primary roof is still going to be the metal, uh, the standing seam metal roof. And we're trying to, with the drive through lane, trying to minimize the uh, attention to that roof in the back and have it more focused on the building and uh, sort of at the front of the of the site. Yes, Tom? I don't see any great, any deviation from the Tom? So Steve, um, the, our, our town center district is re relatively new zoning regulations. Uh, you probably reviewed it. Yeah. One of the things that it calls for is iconic structures and Really, your clock is probably the most iconic structure currently in the town center. So I'm I'm wondering why you thought it was necessary to remove it, and if there was something possibly to put in its stead. <laughs> uh, really, the reason to remove it is more um, it was an, an aesthetic choice, really, and just it was the the. The clock and the tower, we thought it was too much. Uh, well, we're first of all, we're losing a lot of uh, a big part of what we're doing with this building is improving it thermally, putting uh, new windows in and taking the inside out or taking the sheetrock off the inside and uh, re insulating from the exterior, not from the exterior, and removing more roof space from here that's really that's leaky. Uh, it's just going to help the thermal improvement of the building. And another goal here is we're trying to go completely electric and get away from fossil fuels, and it's going to help us get there. So those were really some of the decisions that drove it. Um, and we we saw it in terms of sort of the I, the iconic um, sort of part of the zoning requirement that that front tower being a quarter turn from the the bulk of the building still was going to maintain its prominence. How much how much higher is the tower above your proposed roof line here now? The existing tower. The, the existing clock, yes. It, is it above? How much higher above the existing roof line? It's probably another. Eight or nine feet. I don't. I don't know off the top of my head, though. I could certainly get it, though. Just let you know. You can take a quick drive in the Google car. Yeah, yeah. the perspective is a bit skewed here, um, but this is what it looks like currently. I'm not an architect, but I pretend to be a lot of things in life. So, um, <laughs> is there something faux you could put in its place? Well, I think a big part of it too is that the it feels like it's almost divorced from the building completely, and to to me, it feels like an add-on to an add-on. Hmm. Uh, and so, we really feel like just having the that tower, the quarter turn entry piece. That that is that's going to be that's going to be iconic and have a real presence. 
should not be dis diminished at all by not having the clock. So that roof will be not peaked anymore? It will be peaked. It's still peaked. It'll be hip to a point. Okay. You essentially just take that whole clock and just move it down. Take the, take, take the hat off the clock and put it down on top of the roof. Exactly. Um, and we are adding, so we are adding this trellis feature on this side, which is also going to kind of serve to, you know, um, draw attention and, and add another sort of human scale feature to the to the tower that is going to remain on the front of the building. And it's going to help define this side of the of the entry um, better as the place where where folks are supposed to be going in and out of the bank. It's like one issue we're trying to, to uh Right now, there's two entryways into the lobby, and then you go into the lobby, and you can either go left or to the right. And so, in this new um, use of the, the lobby space, is really what is now the lobby space is going to start to be uh, the member space inside. So you walk through the vestibule. So there's only one entryway, and it's come from a, uh, from the from the side we're looking at here. And so as we sort to start to make that treat each side differently, I think it's, it's just going to make the um, tower piece more, more prominent. You, you don't have a color rendering of that, do you, by chance, Steve? No, I don't. It's, it's pretty much what you're looking at without the clock. Okay. And the other thing that will be different from here is you can see those um, those little arches that are there. So it's masonry on the front of the building, the, uh, the, the, the CMU masonry at the base, brick masonry in the middle, and then that those little arches are made from the stucco. And uh, and so we're going to square those off because we, the, it feels like the arch that either should have been the masonry to feel like it's actually arching over the opening or we just go straight across. I just think it's going to be a much cleaner look. A question by the board? Um, no questions on that. Uh, are you had other... Um, Actually, can I just... Yes, go ahead. I, the only thing I'm thinking is uh, if there's something, I'm wondering if there's something else that could be done on the other side other than the trellis, only because the summer, you're only telling, it's only going to be um, nice in the summer. Like, I don't know, some kind of art, I don't know, something that would, 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 could last throughout the year. And I don't know what that would be, um, but just something for, for thought, I guess. Well, and above, above the entryway, um, so the vestibule there, you can see too that there's going to be wood screening. So we're trying to bring natural materials to that too. So there's the wood screening over the entryway uh, on the upper portion, and wood screening that the that the uh, trellis. The trellis, yeah, the, it's going to be a wood trellis there, and so we are going to have the same language on each side, and so. You know, during in the summertime, yeah, it'll be fully green, but then you'll still see the um, red. There's still going to be a relation between the left side and the right side in the winter. Okay. Other questions by members of the board? Tom. Steve, uh, we're this, we're, this architecture is very new to all of us, right? So. So we're, we play a dangerous game when we go on the internet and we look at pictures of buildings. Uh, and, and so what if that, if the greenery was actually like a metal sculpture, a silver metal sculpture rather than a plant material? I, I'm just throwing stuff out because I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, I mean, one of the big things that there's a lot of glass and so we could consider, you know, with the trellis doing other, some other type of screening for sure. 
For example, but for example, well, like what you're saying, it could be some sort of um, some kind of either metal screening or the wood screening that we have. Part of what we're doing here is trying to keep the um, keep it from overheating inside, because right now it gets pretty hot inside that space, uh, and so the trellis is going to sort of mediate. It's a lot of a lot of daylight coming in through there, and so we're doing we're doing double duty here. The trellis is helping to uh, keep the heat out in the summertime, and then it also has these raking uh, raking lights where it can get some glare inside, so it actually helps with the daylighting too. So it's not as uh, intense in the uh, you know in the late evenings or in the morning. And so any type of screen, essentially that the plants that we're using there, it's a screen material. So we could look at a different type of screening uh, and I'd have to think about what that is, whether it's a wood or a metal or, I mean, if something, if it was a piece of artwork, uh, we'd really have to talk with, that'd be associated with the credit union. And so there's all these other things that come into that in terms of it starts to become signage um, and so I think that opens up a whole other uh, discussion okay well. Paul's raising his hand there, there is a product I think we could explore um, that doesn't take away from the architecture it's called green I mean it's if you go to greenscreen.com they sell product that's uh, a metal kind of stainless steel kind of thing that, that that's and and there's different types but there's some that get placed in front of the panels so that it uh keeps the architecture the same and yet it um is still separate from the building to allow the plants to grow up and behind um and it does uh have a, a good appeal to it in the winter time because they come in different um sizes you can get wire you can get um a harder type frame type so it, it it could be an option instead of doing a wood trellis to do one of those type trellises that that in is in front of the the wood facade that doesn't take away from the architecture yeah paul that could work really well you good yeah i mean yeah. i i think i think i was thinking more on you were thinking more along the lines of some kind of yeah, but I think I mean, either way, I'm not sure I care whether it's wood or metal because it's still dead in the winter. But that's I, th I think I think it's a nice feature. I'm just trying to think of how it would. Yeah. Well, that sounds like that might be a possibility. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I I mean, I'll look, look. I mean, I think it sounds I'm not good unless I can see something. So <laughs> Can, can Paul or somebody share something with the board? Um, Brian, if you can pull up greenscreen.com, that that will provide some of it. My my only worry there is that the the roof overhangs a little bit, so <laughs> maintenance will require watering a little bit of the plant material in that spot. Well, it would any it's going to anyway, right? I mean, with a trellis, yeah. Yep. I have to admit, I do like the clock myself. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Maybe you should do a member poll about the clock. <laughs> <laughs> so you can click on gallery, Brian, and at the top, they'll show a bunch of different pictures. You can scroll through um, oh. uh, or just click on explore, and then there's the, um, you can view all. Um, yeah, explore at the top. And then view all. Loading very slowly. Yes. And then transmitting to you very slowly. <laughs> 
so there there's a million different styles so we could okay. choose one that that still you know displays the architecture because what steve is trying to point out is that we want when when the plant material does die yeah one well, doesn't die but just goes hibernates in the, in the yeah. Um, yeah. dormant in, in, in the winter time right we'll want to be able to see the uh similarities of the two sides of the building um, to a degree at least makes sense yeah well, it looks like all kinds of different choices. Yeah. Is this an outrageous expense, Paul, in your experience? Not not for the size that we're looking at here. Um, the nice thing about it is that you can now pick something a little more vigorous, like a wisteria vine. You know, those are pretty, they, they grow quickly, they grow tall, but they're super strong. So sometimes with wood trellises, they pull them apart. Um, something like this a little bit. <laughs> Uh, stronger and uh, we'll, we'll be able to hold that up well. The other thing you can do too, to add some color, you can do like a mandevilla vine, which grows really fast, but it's kind of like an annual, you know, so it'll die down in the, uh, and, and die off um, in, in the winter, but you can combine both, like put the wisteria in and do the mandevilla. That's one thing we haven't picked yet because we're still looking at, you know, what the trellis type is so that we could select, you know, um a, a climbing vine um mm -hmm. another one that's good is clematis that's a good vine uh, and, uh, yeah, Jackson yeah. And clematis is is pretty good and it's a medium grower it's not as fast as the wisteria but it would do pretty well as well hmm. well yeah it sounds like maybe the metal would be a good option then i can't really tell from these pictures but i should look on my phone yeah i don't know if i can make this bigger Unfortunately, it doesn't want to let me make it much bigger. And I don't think, I don't speak for the board, but I don't think that we want to pick it for you. Just maybe a, you guys give it some thought and, yeah. and hear our concern. What's the website again, Paul? Green Space. Uh, green, greenscreen.com. You want to pursue this further? I, I think we're good. I think I mean yeah. I'm, I'm good with that. Um, I guess I some, mean I guess the, you the, have some feedback the question. To to... Go ahead, Paul. Oh, this is Brian. I was going to ask the, for me the question for the board is, you know, it, are you asking us to redesign the facade at this point? I know we've talked about some options and um, trying to make something more iconic. Um, you know, I, I honestly struggle a little bit myself because sort of the, the wording around iconic features in the zoning language is, you know, um, building features that use unique materials, textures, colors, and forms can highlight entrance, entrances and help create a memorable design. You know, with a, with a sort of minor um, change to the outside like this, um, you know, I, I, I wonder how it is to try and um, really create something like truly iconic. I, I honestly, you know, in my personal aesthetic opinion, I think like warm wood in front of the windows is actually going to look really nice in the winter. And um, no offense to anyone, but if you ask me, I think that clock tower looks like something they pulled off of a strip mall in New Jersey and put on the top of the building. <laughs> well, so, I mean, I it's just. I'm just, I'm really only saying that to highlight that a, a lot of this is an aesthetic difference. And so yeah. direction on the board of what, what do you need us to do uh, would be useful. Well, I was just thinking this is a, you have an opportunity here to make improvements, visual improvements to the building, even though, you know, you say they're minor, but it's enough of a change that you should, and I know you feel that you are making an improvement to the building, but um, that's probably one of the best looking buildings in the district. So yeah, it is. I mean, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to go crazy here, guys. I don't want to go crazy. <laughs> I mean, I think well for the reason Paul said, if if it works well, also with the plant material that you want to use, I think yeah. the metal is a good option. Yeah. Um, but I'm not. I mean, the wood's good too. I think. Yeah. It just. So, yeah. so how, how does the board want to proceed with this? I mean, the applicant has made a presentation. You want to provide different guidance, or um, are you asking for another recommendation? You know, we, they got to move forward. We got to move forward. 
I, I would just ask the applicant to to maybe take take some time, talk amongst yourselves, and just explore this idea, and, and maybe come come with a come with a similar trellis, but maybe uh, have it be out of a, a metal material that can hold a stronger plant material, and see if that makes sense to you folks as well as the board. I, I, I have to, you know, with all due respect, yep. and, and I'm a civil engineer, so I don't appreciate any of this stuff. <laughs> um, but, uh, what was it wrong with what they presented? I, I, I didn't get was, what do we want different? I, 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 the, where it started was a multi-seasonal effect where with the greenery, you really only have it during the, the, the growing season. Right. That once the, the plant material dies off, there's really nothing there. And I, I think by, and by adding the addition of a metal that it, it could be a contrast there for that season. I, I believe that's where this was. Yeah, that's where it's. It's, it's really. I would argue that there's. Oh, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I'm just thinking the different. It's change. It's looking whether that trellis material or the screen material is wood versus a metal. Essentially. And what it looks like without the plants. Yeah. Well, the trellis material on the other side is going to be wood, right? Yeah, well, if we if we change to a metal to hold the plants, then they should be the same on each side. So they both they should both change. Yes. And I mean, what it is now with the trellis in the front here, it's I mean, right now it's a storefront with doors. It has a sort of like a bridge archway, um, steel archway up above. Um, and there was just applique, just decoration, and. Um, yeah, we're just thinking this screening is going to help make the space much more usable, and we think it's going to look it's going to look better too. So, so Steve, so correct can, me if I'm wrong, but you're you're keeping the windows behind the trellis, right? Yeah, they're still there. Yep, the same. So let me just show you. This is obviously a marketing photo, <coughs> but so this is this is the the facade we're talking about here in the middle. Um, and so if you could, what you can picture that this is going to look like in the winter, it's obviously going to get dark sooner. It's going to be lit up a lot more. So, you know, this, this whole glass panel is staying and then there's gonna be a wood trellis in front of it. Um, you know, to be honest, it's, it's gonna look pretty beautiful in the winter uh, as much as it does in the summer. Um, it's, it's not like, it's not gonna look like a blank wall. There's not gonna be no interest to it. You know, there's, there's still gonna be the diffuse light from inside the building and, um, and the addition of the, the wood, which I, I'm assuming is gonna be like nicely stained and, and things. So it's, it's not like there's nothing there in the winter. Um, it's just different than it is in the summer. Okay, I, I'm fine with, with the wood, that's fine, yeah. All right, in that case, let's move on. <clears throat> Great, uh, so uh, I think the next thing is the site plan criteria, general standards, uh, oh yeah, general standards, there wasn't wasn't much for this other than door lighting, no, no fence or anything we're proposing. But um, so there is a special use standard for uh, drive-through facilities. Um, essentially, uh, the drive-through facility, other than being widened, is is unchanged from its existing um, configuration. Um, so it's located to the side and, and the rear of the building. Um, and so um, the, each, each of these lanes uh, has at least two stacking spaces um, before you get to this corner here. Um, I think effectively most of them even have three, um, but it's been uh, in operation here for, for close to 20 years. And um, you know, these, these lanes have provided adequate service for the, the kind of demand they see without causing traffic problems on Payne Turpite or, or within, the, um, within the site. Uh, unless there are any questions on the drive through specifically, I can move on to the standards. <clears throat> the traffic flow from that, uh, Brian, is, is uh, uh, people using a drive through, they normally exit via uh, the back exit there onto um, Pike, what's the name of that road? 
Yeah, typically, um, I mean, there's no there's no specific control. It's it's two way circulation. Whoops, it's two way circulation around the front and the south side of the building. Um, this this back here is one way circulation, but I think my experience is most people go straight out of the pain turn or yeah. pipe drive and before they turn up the pain turn pipe. Okay. But not right now. <laughs> Right, yeah, when the, when the state's not got it all mucked up, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> all right, questions for the applicant? No. On the drive through? No. Uh, you skipped over some of the general standards. Were you intending to do that, or are you going to go back one? Yeah, I'll, I'll hit I'll hit outdoor lighting in the, in the site plan standards. Um, I didn't really see any other general standards that were applicable. Okay. Um, but happy to answer questions if you have any. I do not. Uh, other members of the board? Nope. Nope. Great. Uh, let's dive into site plan standards. So, um, you know, as we as we discussed, it's very minor changes to the site. Um, the regulations require at least twenty parking spaces based on uh, a retail with high customer turnover. Um, so, not more than forty. Right now, there's thirty-seven, and we're removing two, so we'll end up with thirty-five, uh, which fits within the regulation. Um, all the existing parking is nine by 18 with a minimum of 22 foot aisles for two way circulation with the exception of the back here that's a 19, uh, 19 foot aisle uh, one way. Um, already surfaced with asphalt and striped. Um, we're showing snow storage uh, around the perimeter of the site um, outside of the wetland buffer and, and not piled up in the front uh, so as to affect the site distances along the road. Um, so I think, it, as per usual, if they run out of room because we have a heavy snow, they'll they'll need to remove the snow and dispose of it easily. Um, and we don't expect any deliveries other than parcel service type deliveries, which could circulate around the site. Um, and while we're on, I'll just go through access and circulation and then pause for questions. So um, no changes proposed to either the existing curb cuts on the pain turnpike or uh, pike drive. Um, this is a 33 foot wide drive. This is a 30 foot wide drive there. They're both, uh, they're both two way circulation. Uh, and yeah, like I said, the only one way section is back here behind the building. Um, we are proposing a new sidewalk uh, along the frontage uh, with pedestrian connection to the site, uh, as well as two bike racks, uh, U-type bicycle racks. Um, and uh, I don't know if the board has seen it, but um, Steve did, uh, Steve Avery from VSCCU did send me the uh, signed uh, sidewalk maintenance agreement. So that is ready as soon as the, uh, the uh, select board signs it. Yeah, the chair received tonight a copy of it, Brian. Thank you. Yeah. So I have so, not read it. I assume it's similar to the others that we have dealt with. It, it is. What was taken out as a reference to state right away because this is town right away. Town right, yeah. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, that's just town fee simple. Um, continue, uh, Brian. So, so you're, 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 if you don't mind. I'm here, Tom. <laughs> so, uh, Brian and, and Paul, that this sidewalk, Vermont has adopted a complete streets planning design. Is is do you think the so sidewalk here is compliant with with that uh, complete streets? <clears throat> you may know. I'm I'm hoping you know more about it than I do. I I'm I'm actually not familiar with with uh, what you're referencing. So, did you have a more specific question or? There's green spaces requirements for and handicap accessibility and and a, a, a bunch of things like that. I think about eight or ten years the state has approved it. Yeah. So Tom, if you have um, if you have something from the state in terms of a cross section of what they would like to see for a complete street along Payne Turnpike, that'd be helpful to to our team, I guess. But from to answer the first question you had, whether or not it can meet complete streets, Payne Turnpike is awfully wide. So 
yes, you can meet complete streets by providing. So complete streets that just for, for people that don't understand the definition of it really is like being complete for everyone. And that means not just cars, but people walking, people biking. Right. So are we we're, we're definitely leaning towards that because we're now providing the pedestrian accommodations in the town center by having the sidewalk. Um, and, and then again, the road is well wide enough to 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 provide a bike lane for that. But again, it's good to know what um, the town and the state are looking for specifically there uh, in terms of a design that 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 you're looking towards, you know, you know, to, to, to envision ahead as a standard to provide the complete streets um, in, in, in a section detail or something. So <clears throat> I know the applicant probably is not familiar with this, but the we've gone through a, a complete rezoning of this area. And so your, your neighbors to your north, north uh, is is has been earmarked for high density residential. Oh, <laughs> south. South. No. Um, north. So um, towards Montpelier. Yeah. Okay. Whatever it is. That's north. Um, okay. <laughs> and uh, so pretty we we really see an expansion of the sidewalks. We 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 see an expansion of of a bike lane through here as well. Um, so have, have you given any thought to the need of, of on-street parking here then? Um, I, I, it'll be a town, it would be a, a town venture to do that, but does that help your business having on-street parking? Um, well, I, I don't know that I can, maybe Steve Avery can answer that from a business perspective, but I know there's a lack for parking here. Um, go ahead, Steve. I see you've unmuted yourself. Yeah, that's uh, kind of a new one for me. I mean, you know, we love to have plenty of parking for our members. That's convenient and easy to get to. Um, I mean, I, I don't see, <clears throat> initially, I don't see a real advantage to street parking at this site, uh, just because we have we have plenty of parking uh, on site. So, you know, maybe fast forward however much time we think, you know, there may be high density residential down the street and, you know, more infill development along Payne Turnpike, then, you know, maybe things look different at that time. But with how the, the street is kind of configured now, um, I, I don't see an advantage to it. If anything, it might force you to kind of deal with the intersection um, and laning, you know, at Route 62 and Payne Turnpike and Pipe Drive. Well, Steve Avery, I know you're aware that the town just completed a $2.2 .2 million sewer project that went down Payne Turnpike North. It, it, it uh, took out one of your pump stations that uh, now, so you're a gravity system. So, so we made we made that investment for a reason, right? We we really made that investment to grow that area. Um, so, anyways, it's just food for thought for for you folks. That is, as the town continues its its uh, planning and growth, if you have any any insight that we should consider, you know, please come to the table. Will do. Thank you. Yeah, and, and relative to the location of the sidewalk, I mean, as as a designer of a, a specific site, it's you know the sidewalk is there for a reason, which I can I can where it is, which I can talk about. But it it's difficult when you're designing things on a site by site basis um, to really predict or understand um, the sort of greater sidewalk network that may be created. So. Certainly, if, if you have feedback on where the town would like it to go, we can consider it. Um, there's some things that need to be moved around on this site if if it weren't in the location where it's proposed now. Yeah, my, my only comment was going to be about having space between green space between the road and the sidewalk. But if that causes too much trouble, then yeah. So the the zoning requirements five feet, which is which is we meet at this site. 
Um, part of the reason it's there is because of this utility, existing utility pole. Um, and then if we try to put it on the other side, um, you know, it, on our side of the right of way, you know, it's needing to relocate the sign in that area. Um, it seemed more useful to the town, honestly, to have it closer to the road, but, um, yeah. you know, like I said, we, we would, and also because trying, thinking about connection, you know, if we put it up on our side of the, the right of way, um, then you do have, a, you know, a tree and some other things in the way here and, you know, whether future sidewalk, if whether it's developed privately by the town and, you know, I was thinking you didn't want it to kind of zigzag back and forth across right. different property frontages. So that's what I mean about it being kind of hard to predict um, what's going to happen on other properties or maybe by the town in the future when, when trying to lay out sidewalk uh, site by site as we're required to in the zoning regulations. Anyway, this, this, this sidewalk is designed to have a green strip of at least five feet between the sidewalk and, and the pavement of the road. Oh, it is? Yeah. Yes, okay. it is. Yeah, and, right. yeah, just, huh. it's, it's, it, the yeah, cross section would have been helpful, um, to be honest with you. Um, the, at least I didn't see one. Um, I, it terminates uh, on the uh, south side, uh, short of the, that, that road. Uh, what, what have you got for a termination there? It just ends in uh, a grass strip or a what? Yeah, that, that is as far as VSCCU has control. Well, I mean, I understand this is in the right of way, but I was assuming that we would not want to build a sidewalk across someone else's right of way frontage. Uh, so yes, it, you know, it would end, um, it would just end in the grass on, on either end of VSCCU property. Well, certainly on the uh, north side, it has to end in grass because, you know, it it's goes on the other property. On the south side, is that a town road? Private. Private, private. private road, okay. Private. So, um, okay. Well, that would explain why you would terminate there. It would be nice to have it go to the road, though. What? It would be nice to have it go all the way to the road. It yeah. really should. I was thinking and, and, and it should obviously have the necessary taper to, to come down to the road grade. Is pipe uh, paved? I think just the, uh, you know what? I think they yeah. paved it all the way back to um, Bisbet when they put that in. Yeah, so it really should extend, in my opinion, it really should extend uh, uh, down to the paved surface of the pipe drive. Um, uh, How Again, there's there's some complications there that we're not in control of. Um, you know, for instance, there's this existing catch basin, um, which is off of the SEC's property. Um, you know, and and some other things that would have to be coordinated in order to make that happen. So, um, you know, again, we, we're we're trying to meet the regulation um, in the area that the SEC has control over, and um, you know, if the if the board's going to Required. Which, which catch basin is that? Uh, that is a good question uh, that I don't know the answer to. It's, it's probably it's, it's either the town's catch basin or it might be the state's catch basin if it's something they installed as part of the uh, parking lot or something, but I'm not sure. Is there a runoff from the project going through that catch basin? Uh, the small amount, yeah, stuff that gets into this front area ends up in that catch basin. Uh, it looks to me like there's a line that actually goes directly to it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I don't know what, that's something that we saw in a survey, but I don't know where that originates. Where does the stormwater from this site go? Uh, some of it does come down, some of it, uh, let's see, some of it off in the catch basin, you know, a lot of it, the stuff on this side of the site ends up along the edge of Pike Drive and down into that catch basin. Um, some of it comes along the front and then comes around to the existing uh, stormwater detention feature in the back. Um, I don't think any of it directly drains because that's all curb. Yeah, so it either comes around and comes down this little stone swale into this catch basin or some of it drains directly on a Pike Drive over here as well. No, sorry, that's coming the other way. Some of Pike Drive drains onto our site and then down into that catch basin. It looks to me like a fair amount of it drains right down the Prairie Turbine. Uh, yeah, 
it's not reflected really well in the contours, but there is a, a depression along the front. Uh, so some of it may get to paint trim pike and that, that may just be a maintenance issue, but um, there are shallow swales along the front. Well, right now we're talking about sidewall, but I, I, I do want to ask more about that storm water. I, I want, you don't need a permit from the state, right? No, it's, it's everything's under an acre. Yeah, and, and it's already, you're not adding any new impervious area. Uh, just a very oh, small wow. in this corner, yeah. like under 100 square feet, and, and the sidewalk. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I guess I'm not aware of any problems with stormwater here, but I, I, I don't like the fact that we really don't have a clear vision of where the stormwater goes. Um, uh, and that may be a part of our bylaws where we don't do spoiling water under the site criteria. That bothers me. Um, okay, well, you answered my question about the sidewalk, which is why you have terminating the grass. Um, that catch basin, is that, what grade is that? Did you say grade or great? Grade. Is that level with the grass or is that? Uh, yes. Yep. It's gen it's slightly below the road, uh, but it's in the grass. It is below the road level? Yes. So that's graded then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's graded to drain into the catch basin as existing. Yes. Okay. So to basically to avoid that, one would need to basically come further toward the paint turnpike north or the other side, one or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to move it east or west along along Pike Drive here and reroute this pipe from the catch basin here that's adjacent to the uh, the park and ride. <clears throat> I mean, I think at least the state would be involved in that because it all drains into the Route 62 right away. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the, all right. Um, where are we here? I've lost track of where we are. Uh, we were about to start landscaping if we're done talking about the sidewalk. I think I think we are. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so, Paul, would you like to run them through their landscaping? What left? <laughs> landscaping. <laughs> yep. So um, we basically enhanced the site, the existing site uh, landscaping. There's a, there's a very good um, landscaping along the, the east. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the east side and the west side, I guess the two, the, you know, if you're looking at the drawing, the right side of the drawing and then the back um, that are very heavily landscaped. Um, there is a crab apple tree that's existing there that's going to be uh, th that's dead that that back one that's in darker color that we we're going to replace. We also added notations to go ahead and prune up a lot of the existing landscape trees that are there. Um, we're adding some birch trees um, on the south side. And then we're we're putting in some uh, foundation shrubs and perennials and ground covers. Uh, surrounding the entire building. Um, we're not uh, placing shrubs that are gonna uh, be too tall or big or, you know, the important thing for a credit union or a bank is that we don't create areas where people can hide. Um, so <laughs> we, we, actually, they're very important actually. So we've, we've placed um, uh, specific types of plants that are still aesthetically pleasing, but undesirable for hiding like Rosa Ragosa. You wouldn't want to crawl around in this. <laughs> it's very prickly. So all those pink colored shrubs are the Rosa Ragosa shrubs uh, that will be beautiful and they actually will have color um, from you know late spring throughout the summer. Um, so so that those are there. And then what we did in the front too is just that, like the sign, the existing uh, freestanding sign along the right of way of Payne Turnpike has a little small uh, planting bed already, instead of it just being, um, I guess, uh, you know, vertical with the freestanding sign, we, we went horizontal and created a larger 
uh, planting mass area with shrubs and perennials in the front. And we duplicated that, um, I guess, just north so that, you know, there's no sign on that end, but we did another planter and some shrubs and ground cover there. Um, we also uh, landscaped uh, the edges of the vehicular entry to add some ground cover plantings and kept the view nice and open. We're adding a bench. What, what this does, this project, is really enhanced pedestrianism, having the sidewalk, having the connection and the two bike racks, and then taking out those two spaces is going to be aesthetically huge because it's really going to um, promote the pedestrian connection to Payne Turnpike. So I think that's important with the new vestibule. So we have a seating bench that's going to be located in the front there as well. Um, and we're just kind of highlighting uh, that aesthetic. So I'm happy to answer any questions anybody has. Holly? I was just wondering why you chose not to put some landscaping along Payne Turnpike. Yeah, yeah. There, well, we are enhancing it. Um, the building's very prominent and architecturally it's close and different than a lot of the other projects we've been working on in Berlin too. The, the vehicular curb cut to Payne Turnpike is very narrow, right? So we don't have a long, so the, the view triangles too to Payne Turnpike as you're coming in and out are important to maintain that view. And I believe what we're doing with the building and really like right now, the um, landscape space that's right in front of and surrounding the buildings is just like red lava rock right now. Um, so what we're doing is is really coloring that up and putting uh, in front of the shrubs where it's kind of stepping down, terracing down to the ground cover in the front, which is going to be, I think, Vinca, yeah, Vinca vine, which will, will, will really provide a nice blanket, blanket of additional color. So we're really demonstrating a nice view to the architecture, the building, and and highlighting, you know, a skirt around the building with some landscaping. And we are, you know, landscaping with shrubs and perennials a bit along the, the sidewalk, but we believe the view and the, the bench and, you know, the pedestrianism in front of the building is going to be a, a, a important visually. I'd also point out that um, you can't plant any significant sized trees uh, along the front, particularly in this area, because there's a very significant um, power line there and it's low. Uh, and, um, you know, this is only about 10 feet from the parking to the power line. Um, so what we were trying to avoid was planting trees along here and then having the power company come out along and hack half of them off. <laughs> because that would probably be worse than, than planting no trees at all. Yeah. There. Yeah, well, that makes sense. And the power company would. <laughs> yeah, and they don't have to ask us or you. <laughs> <laughs> Questions on landscaping? No, I think it's good. I think, yeah. Yeah, I think it's good. improvement. Um, lighting? There we go. Um, so site lighting, uh, this is really kind of minor changes to the existing site lighting. Um, we're not putting in any new pole lights. So there's, there's four uh, existing pole lights around the building, um, which they have already um, downcast uh, LED fixtures, um, but they're modeled here in the, um, the photometric plan. So we are adding um, lighting, there'll be new lighting under the new canopy that'll be surface mount on the underneath of the canopy, um, as well as there's a couple of existing canopies back here um, that I think, these are existing fixtures back here under these canopies that are, are to remain. So um, the light levels on the site are, are, are pretty low at this, this point anyway. It's a uh, one foot candle average across the site. Um, and, and you can see that the the area of calculation doesn't include any zeros, and it's it's pretty well limited to the the actual used area of the site. Um, we're proposing control with timer and photo cells. Um, so photo cells to turn the lights on, timer to turn the lights off. Um, the drive-through canopy lights will be turned off at at 5:30 p.m., and then the pole lights will be turned off at 11 p.m. Um, we're proposing that the building mounting lights um, do stay on until. Uh, all night for, for security purposes uh, at the bank. Um, I think I may have 
mixed. There are some building mounted, new building mounted lights on the front um, to, to here, these labeled B um, to replace the, uh, the existing ones that are underneath the canopies that are being removed. Are the fixtures on the poles and the A fixtures and the um, pole fixtures, are they being changed? So um, these A fixtures in the back are existing. The pole fixtures are existing, not to be changed. These fixtures, A fixtures underneath the canopy are new. <laughs> the canopy is new. Um, and these okay. B fixtures are new. All right. They're, they're new or they just been changed out? Uh, they'll be new because the ones that are there now are, are underneath the existing canopies. Okay. The canopies are coming off and they're being replaced with, with uh, wall packs. All right, questions on lighting, comments on lighting. Three none, signs. Uh, so no no changes are proposed to the signage. There's the um, existing building mounted sign and, and the other one out in the front, which will remain. Performance standards, I believe you addressed that in your text. Um, uh, roads control and then stormwater treatment. Um, without going back and looking at the text of our application, do you know where the stormwater is going here? Yeah, so generally, uh, as we discussed, um, you know, it, it runs mostly from the um, sides of the east side, Torrance Pay and Turnpike. The stuff on the south of the building is collected in this catch basin and directed that way. Um, the majority of the pavement on the north runs in a, a shallow swale that kind of gets deeper as it goes around to the north end of the building. Um, there's an existing uh, stormwater detention basin here in the north uh, west corner of the site, um, which then outlets with an existing outlet into this, this wetland behind. So um, because the because the changes to the impervious area here are really minor, we're not proposing any changes to the existing stormwater runoff and treatment. Okay, so that uh, that 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 little retention area, uh, which collects a fair amount of runoff from the parking lot, actually discharges to the weather behind. It does, yeah. Okay. Yep, and there's a there's a real control structure here that was all done as part of the development. Yeah. Okay, and you're really not changing anything there. No, the, the only real change is that small amount of pavement that's being added um, oh. around the new um, drive through lanes. Not new, but the, the revised drive through lanes. Mm -hmm. um, we've covered all the standards, but we not have any questions. Do you have additional comments you wanted to make? Brian. Uh, no, I think that's that's it for our presentation. Is there anyone else on our team that wanted to make any final comments? Doesn't doesn't appear that way. I guess the only thing that leaves us with, uh, and and I don't want to pursue it, spend a lot more time on it, was the facade, and we would beat around the facade. That where's the board stand on the facade they they proposed, uh, namely the trellis and the planting? I'm fine. You're fine, Polly. Yeah. Is there think... anything, John? You want to ask? I haven't. I can't see you far enough away, so I don't know if you raised your hand anywhere along the line or not. No, I didn't. Actually, I was going to say I like the new facade. So. <laughs> Thank you. And is Tour still there somewhere? Tour's here. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, Tour. Do you I'm have any good comments good. or questions? Uh, no, no questions. I'm good with the facade. All right. Tom, did you want to say? Oh, I'm not the chair. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> I thought he raised his hand. No. Oh, okay. Oh. I was ignoring him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, there's nothing further for the applicant uh, from the board. Uh, yeah, uh, Tom, you have something? I, I would just like to make one comment. I, I do appreciate uh, Credit Union being in our town. You've been good neighbors and good partners, and hope our relationship can continue long into the future. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Uh, so, if you have nothing further, Brian. 
Do I uh, members of your team? In that case, I'm going to ask the board uh, if they're prepared to adjourn this hearing. So moved. I have a motion for Polly to adjourn the Second. hearing portion. Second. Second. Seconded by John. Beat, beating two are out. Um, <laughs> it won't happen again. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> discuss that motion. All those in favor of the motion to adjourn the uh, uh, one part of the hearing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, uh, we are adjourned. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. To the team, thank Brian. You. Thank you all. Thanks, Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. Have, have, a, have a good evening. I just know that um, Christy was not with us tonight. She, she's not. She's going to do off recording. She, she, yep, she, yep, yep. she let me know that she was going to be here. Okay. Um, we do have one other item of business we did not get to at the last meeting uh, that I'd like to take care of, and that's the minutes of our meeting. I have to go look. It's been long enough to go, so I'll find the actual one. Here it is. The meetings of August 3rd. Um, far back for me to remember. <laughs> I, um, I had a couple of comments that I shared, and, and, and Christy never got back to me, and nobody else on the board um, uh, joined in. Um, I, um, I wanted uh, um, Christy to add some information on who the different applicants were. Um, and so right. uh, if she can't figure that out, I've actually figured out most of them. Uh, but, you know, uh, Sean Cunningham, who was he? You know, he's the engineer for uh, <coughs> Larry and Burke. Yeah, uh, Larry and Burke. Uh, so, so some of that needs to be just because otherwise this is just meaningless to, to look at these names and just not know who they represent. Yeah. Um, so uh, that was one comment I made. Um, uh, the other comment I had was uh, uh, I just we need to scratch the um, – uh, distance from, from the B Street. Um, this is on the third paragraph on page two. Again, you can go to my notes, but it says it meets the regulations, which is not, you know, it does not. So that, that should be stricken. Um, and uh, that was pretty clear in my comments. And the only other thing I was going to make a mention of is uh, on the motion to approve the previous minutes. They were amended, and it wasn't noted that they were amend as amended. So uh, the minor minor thing. So. Uh, good night. Good night. Good night. So I would um, I would make a, I would uh, make a motion that uh, we approve those minutes subject to those um, amendments that I made. I don't know if you had anything, Polly. Did you? Are we supposed to record the whole meeting? What? They are. Oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll second that motion. All right. Thank you. Um, uh, is there any discussion of those? That hearing none. All those in favor of the motion to amend the. Um, Minutes uh, to a, a few Ooh. minutes as amended. Yeah. Um, please say goodbye by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, we approve the minutes, um, and I'll work with, if you would okay. if you talk to Christy, I'll work with her on whatever information you need. It doesn't need to be complete, but it needs to be more complete than it is. Yeah. Um, so, uh, other than that, uh, uh, does the board want to go into the little session on the application tonight? We should do that. I move that we go into the deliberative session. Second. Been made and seconded uh, by Tour. Um, all in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 And the board is entering into delivery session. I need to. You're going to basically shut people down. Yeah. <coughs> Our work is back. Okay, work is back. Um, is there any of this has become for this board tonight? Uh, hearing none, um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, I'll second. Polly second. Uh, John has made the motion. Uh, uh, all those in favor of that motion, please sit in front of me saying aye. 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 Opposed? Yay. <laughs> we are adjourned. I thank you all very much. Okay, so we're on for five tomorrow, right? We're on for five tomorrow to deliberate the application. And we can do it by Zoom?
Okay. Uh, pardon? We, I was just making.